Okay, welcome. Today I want to offer some reflection ab about what complex PTSD is, CPTSD, and I'm going to be drawing upon Pete Walker's book, Complex PTSD, but also talking about uh, Judith Herman's Trauma and Recovery, which talks about um, complex PTSD, I think, for one of the first times in her book. So I'm going to draw upon that. Um, so enjoy. Okay, so I have been reading uh, Pete Walker's book the last couple of weeks, and it's amazing, really great. And the more I read it, the more I link it in to what most of the people who listen to my um, my podcasts, uh, ex boarders, I see that I really see that it is complex PTSD boarding school. Again, I, I messaged Pete Walker about three years ago and I asked him to come on the podcast. He says he was too busy, but he did say boarding school for him is classic PTSD. Those are roughly his words. I don't know exactly, but um, this really has helped me. So what I want to do today, for those of you who haven't been to boarding school, who are just interested in complex PTSD, just going to talk a little bit about it. So. Um, what is complex PTSD? So Pete Walker, page one, he says it is a learned set of responses and a failure to complete numerous important developmental tasks. This means that it is environmentally, not genetically caused. In other words, unlike most of the diagnoses it is confused with, it is neither inborn nor characterological. As such, it is learned. It is not inscribed in your DNA. It is a disorder caused by nurture or rather the lack of it, not nature. You know, so we didn't get nurtured as children, essentially. This is especially good news because what is learned can be unlearned and vice versa. What was not provided by your parents can now be provided by yourself and others. And he talks about this, and, and I'll go into more depth if, if people are interested, um, just about how we heal, which is what I'm fascinated by, that's the work I do with clients, is, is how we heal from um, complex trauma from boarding school syndrome. And he talks about it here. Um, recovery from complex PTSD typically has important self-help and relational co components. The relational piece can come from authors, friends, partners, teachers, therapists, therapeutic groups, or any combination of these. I like to call this parenting by committee. So listening to this, studying, that's helping you to heal what he's saying there. And then continuing the definition of complex PTSD. CPTSD is a more severe form of post-traumatic stress disorder. It is delineated from this better known trauma syndrome by five of the most of its most common troublesome features. Emotional flashbacks, toxic shame, self-abandonment, a vicious inner critic and social anxiety so it's just important to see the emotional flashback it's not a, a mental flashback it's an emotional so it might be you just get triggered by something someone says something or certain situations you know he says social anxiety we just get that emotional flashback we suddenly we're like oh my god you know for example certain times of year February, March, April, for some people, that's a time where people get quite depressed. We can have an emotional flashback, feel, you know, he talks about this in um, suic suicidal ideation. Um, so those are just some of the, 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 the bits he talks about in here. Um, I also wanted to just mention as well he says here furthermore complex ptsd can be caused by emotional neglect alone and you know what is emotional neglect according to um the uh, nspcc from their website they say emotional neglect a child doesn't get the nurture and stimulation they need this could be through ignoring humiliating intimidating or isolating them so essentially what I saw at school, I saw all of these. But maybe, you know, you got that emotional neglect at home as well. Um, so 
then drawing upon um, Judith Herman and her her book here. And this was written in 1991, and this was the first time she calls it a new diagnosis. People had talked of PTSD, but not complex PTSD. And she says the syndrome that follows upon prolonged repeated trauma needs its own name. I propose to call it complex post-traumatic stress disorder. The responses to trauma are best understood as a spectrum of conditions rather than as a single disorder. They range from a brief brief stress risk reaction that gets better by itself and never qualifies for a diagnosis to classic or simple post-traumatic stress disorder to the complex syndrome of prolonged repeated trauma and she also goes on to say on page 120 Lenore Ter distinguishes the effects of a single traumatic blow which she calls type 1 trauma from the effects of prolonged repeated trauma, which she calls type 2. Her description of the type 2 syndrome includes denial and psychic numbing, self-hypnosis and dissociation, and alternations between extreme passivity and outbursts of rage. And I would also like to just read out, um, she's got a here a diagnostic criteria seven things which kind of um, she says outline what complex post-traumatic stress disorder is so i'll just go through those and it, again each of those as i read them i can relate to my own life going oh yeah my god yeah and so many of my clients or those that i've worked with or stories again i've read so many biographies of people who've been to to boarding school or, or have had difficult upbringing first one uh, history of subjection to totalitarian control over a pro prolonged period, months to years. Yeah, that's the first thing. So for us who went to boarding school, you know, we were totally controlled for that period of time. It's the first thing. Second thing, alter alterations in effect regulation. So that's to do with our emotions, you know, and they include persistent dysphoria, chronic suicidal preoccupation, self-injury, explosive or extremely inhibited anger, and compulsive or extremely inhibited sexuality. So I've often seen this, especially the last two, that we really suppress our anger and then suddenly we'll explode. That was me, once a year I would explode, but most of the time everyone would say, oh you're so peaceful. I was like, yeah. Um, I'd literally go running around the local neighbourhood, you know, in anger. Not directing at anyone, but mainly at myself. Then the third thing, alterations in consciousness, including amnesia or hyper, hypernesia for traumatic events, transient dissociative episodes, and depersonalization, and then reliving experiences. So again, I've often heard of this, this dissociation. Joyce Sharon talks of the A, B, C, D of boarding school syndrome. Then alterations in self-perception, including sense of helplessness or para paralysis oh, that's a good one. Um, of initiative, shame, guilt and self-blame. A sense of defilement or stigma. A sense of complete difference from others. It may include sense of specialness, utter loneliness, belief, no other person can understand or non-human identity. And the fifth one is alterations in perception of perpetrator, including preoccupation with relationship with perpetrator. Yeah, could be revenge. Unrealistic attribution of total power to perpetrator. You know, and then idealization or paradoxical gratitude and the sense of special or supernatural relationship acceptance of belief system or rationalizations of the perpetrator so you know this is what jennifer Frey talks about in her papers and betrayal trauma this idea that we have she calls it um uh, i forgot it's kind of some form of psychogenic amnesia dissociative amnesia we can't remember what happened so we paint it that the perpetrator is in a good light and, you know, I'd love to come back to betrayal trauma uh, on another video. 
Number six is alterations in relation with others, including isolation and withdrawal, disruption in intimate relationships, the repeated search for rescuer, uh, persistent distrust, repeated failures of self-protection. Uh, and the seventh one is alterations in systems of meaning, loss of sustaining faith, sense of hopelessness and despair. Now, as I read them, you know, in my 20s, that was me. So many of those were there. Suicidal ideation, self-harming, helplessness, hopelessness, despair. So many of these. Um, so, you know, I would recommend reading this book. That's on page 121. Um, you know, and then the last bit I wanted to just talk about was just about developmental trauma. So this is the words of Gabor Mate, and I've repeated this before in other videos. But he says, this is repeated or prolonged exposure to adversity during development, such as abuse, neglect, or being raised in a chaotic or unpredictable environment. Developmental trauma often results in complex, complex PTSD, CPTSD. So you can see how these three you know, bits of information from Pete Walker, uh, Judith Herman, and then Gabor Mate, how they, they interweave. So it just gives you a bit of a basing for what complex PTSD is. Now, you know, I'd be happy to do another video at another time about the symptoms of complex PTSD or, you know, some of the healing that he talks about. Please just let me know. Um, and yeah, what have I updates have I got? Um, yeah, I had a podcast with Tom Grease, which went live on Friday. He's a, a, an actor and a comedian who won one of the awards at the Edinburgh Fringe Festival. Uh, great performance. I saw him at um, the Boarding School Survivors Conference. Uh, you know, it's a really great conversation with him. A fascinating guy. And um, yeah, I really love uh, his show. And yeah, I've got a, a few more. I'm going to be talking about the mother wound with Mark Stibby again. Um, we, we had a conversation about a month ago about his book. Um, talking about his boarding school experience we're going to link that into the mother wound as well um, and yeah everything else um, yeah uh, hopefully find some more guests over the next few um, few weeks and I'll let you know so thank you so much okay take care